All right, welcome to the League of Extraordinary Readers. I am the Blurry Dude. I'm the moderator. And I'm that guy. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Another Fine Myth by Robert Asprin. Uh, fantastic book, um, also known as We All Love Gleep. <laughs> so before we get started on the questions, I chose this one because I remember it very fondly when I was a teenager. And I was a little worried that it was going to be like, you know, those cartoons that you liked as kids. And then as an adult, you started to watch and wonder what was wrong with you. Fortunately, that was not the case. Um, but we'll, we'll get more into that. I guess I'll let the moderator do her job and we'll get into the questions. You're going to let everybody know how they can chime in if they want? Ah, uh, yes. If you would like to message us or chat with us, you can do so via Google, um, League of Extraordinary Readers at gmail.com. Um, yeah, sorry that's so long, but it is. Uh, or you can go on the Facebook page and you can message us through there. You can comment on the blog at extraordinaryreaders.com. Um, and I believe if you can join the Hangout, you can join the live chat here but I still haven't been able to test that. So, so there it is. All right. So on, onward, and yep. upward. Yep. Okay. Let's do the questions. Hey, for, those of, for those of you who did not watch the previous episode, generally how this works is, you know, we, we rotate picking this book and then we review it. A lot of the next year's books will actually be up and coming authors. Uh, and then, we go through three questions. The person who chooses the book that episode writes the questions, and then we go into the respect scoring, which I'll, I'll give the brief guidelines when we get to that part. All right. So first question, what are your thoughts on the structure and description of magic? I guess I should I'm answer sorry, first. Can I answer this one first? No, but please. Yeah, because go ahead. This just completely cracked me up just following up from the Celestine Prophecy and oh, all the energy no. fields that we went over. And then we get in this book and they're talking about energy fields. It just, I'm sorry. It was awesome. It was great. It was, it made me laugh. And I don't know. I guess it was coincidental that we oh, right, yes. read a book about energy fields. So now we all need to perform magic, I guess. I don't well, know. right. We have to summon demons and yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the thing, the thing about the magic in the book series is, um, they don't call it by name, but basically what they're doing is they're touching on the concept of ley lines, which is, it, it's an old concept, um, in regards to magic, um, where it's like fields of energy that you can tap into. Um, they, right. Have you read been, the Celestine prophecy? Huh? Have you read the Celestine prophecy? No. Okay. First off, don't. Ever. <laughs> okay, seriously. It is it is of psychological detriment for you to read right. that book. Um but it it's the same thing. Yes, you're you're absolutely right. It's the ley lines thing. And and they were it was it was heavy, let me tell you. Right. But it's they the the way they do it, I mean, it's kinda like uh you remember the role playing game riffs, right? It's kind of the same thing. The whole the whole game's kind of based on that concept of ley lines, right? In regards to how magic works, right? I liked it, and I'm assuming because this Which is. Which, if a you want, if you want to know, uh, you know, read the book. This one, I, I'm probably going to spend the entire episode saying that this is a. It was a great escape from the Celestine prophecy. <laughs> right. Well, you two have both finished the series. I've only this is the first time I've ever read it. So, do they get more into detail about how the magic works in the other no, books? No, it's it's very. I mean, it's really. Yeah, you you get. I think that's one of the appeals. Yeah, it the the magic is it's like it just works. We're not going to explain why. This is more about the characters. Enjoy the adventures of Ski and Oz. You know, that's pretty very much cool. how it is. Right. Which Indeed. I love Oz. I'm sorry, Oz is awesome. His sarcasm is great. I just I oh, uh, read Myth Nomers and Imperfections. <laughs> oh, we're, we're, I I have the entire series. So well, yep. do you? Did uh, where did you stop? Sweet so Myth Three Life Life is not the last book in the series. No, he did. I, 
I own every single. Oh, okay, so song. you have like the collaborations he did with Jody Lynn Nye and the stuff yes. he wrote up until he died in like 2007. I, I went and bought the collectors. Oh, everything. wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really did. I, well, first off, it was, well, it was on sale. Right. And it was like 60 or $70. So I was like, yeah, I've got to do that. Even if, even if it just sits on a shelf because I do have a fond memory of it. But again, I, it, it is still very readable. Yeah, I think the only one I didn't read and I have it is the one where Skeeve's helping the wusses. Right. <laughs> but other than that, I, I've read pretty much all of them. By the way, we're, we're generally sticking to a, thing, what, 10 minute. 15. 15 minute per question. So. Yeah. And then we didn't really stick to a time frame. So, I mean, a little bit of a time frame. I just kind of kept an eye on the time for the other ones. Right. Okay. But, yeah, what did you think? I don't know. You, so, you picked the book. What was your ideas about the structure and description of magic? Well, I, I thought it was great. Just like, just like uh, Guy said, um, it was simple. It's like, hey, okay, for those of you who really want to know, this is how this works. And it was a very simple explanation you know, wheel turns here, shaft goes like this, you know, these things move in this direction and you're done. And then that was it. And then the rest of the, the rest of the, the book and with a little bit of bias from reading the rest of the series, it's story. Like you, you just, right. the universe was thing. put together very quickly and very simply so yeah. that you knew everything that was going on and could pay attention to the story without having to back, you know, without having to Orson Scott card it. Right. Right. And, and some of the later stories, I mean, they do touch on it. Like they go to a couple dimensions where there's like no magic or very little magic. Right. Um, but again, it's kind of incidental. It just means like, Oh shit, we got to do this without using magic kind of thing, you know? Right. I liked how Oz taught him just what was needed at the time. I mean, it's not like he ever got any real lesson. It was just in the spur of yeah, the was, moment. You know what I mean? Whatever head, was needed at that training. time, this is what block. you're learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Oz. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he's uh, He's an interesting character. Um, as the books go on. Well, speaking of characters, that was the next question. I mean, we can go ahead and move on to the next question because I honestly, I did, it didn't bother me too much, but I did have a hard time with it. it was with a little exposition, how did you, how did you come to care about the characters? Which I did, but I had a hard time at the beginning of this book because he just, boom, ran into it and his master's dead. And I mean, there was no exposition at all in building the characters. Well, he just... Boom. <laughs> Most of the books, with the exception of a couple of them, are done in the first person from the view of Ski, um, with the exception of some later books where it's like different. Well, but wait, 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 wait. I've got to wrangle you. We're only talking about this one. Well, isn't this one done in first person? In, it from is. the viewpoint of Skeev? It is, but what. So, well, there's, the this, there's this sudden into the rising action three stage rather than five stage structure which in but, his defense and i have to agree with you i mean this is a long it's what 19 books in the series and in his uh, defense it's almost like this book is the exposition to me i haven't read the other books but but it's not but now i, I agree but i have to say it's not a bad thing because it's still fun no i don't think so either right it just threw me off for a minute. It took me a minute to, to catch up, I guess, to figure out what... Well, the other thing is, is I just, for some reason, assumed they were on Earth. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're on Claude. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, why does this kid not know these things? Because <laughs> he keeps, keeps asking questions about, I, I don't know. He'll make, um, like, a baseball comment or something, and the kid's like, what's that? Right. Because he's, he's a Claude. He's right. from Claude. They don't... Right. Which but, I think was pretty slick the way he did that because I I am sure I'm not the only reader that assumed they were on Earth and were like wait a minute what right and then when you find out he's not that that was pretty slick I thought but. right but going back to your comment about you know how it just kind of everything happened at once again because the book's done in first person you know 
you're looking at it through the perception of Skeeve. I mean, he doesn't know what's going on, so he's trying to explain it to the audience in the best way he knows how, because that's how he sees it. It's like, okay, I'm going to... But there's play. no... Wait a minute. That's still... You're still... That's two different things. Exposition and narrative are two different things. You do one through the other. He could have. He could have had a day in the life of before it was, and now his master's dead. And I'm not, well, we're not saying it's a bad thing, just that it was different. He kind of did that briefly where he talked about, you know, the kind of stuff he did, like, for his master, you know, about him being a poor farmer kid and stuff and, you know, him sneaking lessons to go fishing or whatever. I mean, Ski very, actually is a very lazy character <laughs> initially. And so he's only through the narrative explaining things the way he sees it. And I understand what you're saying about the exposition, but he's again, not the kind of character that would have a lot of exposition because it's not pertinent to him. Well, and that, well, and that's, an, that's kind of another point because I would definitely say that was true with Oz. Oz's exposition is almost impossible anyway, because he just kind of, yeah, appears. but you know what? He does well, give background on Oz. Old. He does give background on Oz. You did find out more information about Oz. You never really find Through out much about Steve. Yeah, you it never find out me. why Steve was in the middle of the woods, why, except for he was a, a thief, I think. But the, you never find out, I mean, where were his parents? Where were, I mean, you don't, there's no right. background on Steve at all. Um, no, but because but it's the not best, important. Well, True. I, but well, the best you know, books, it's hard to get, build to a character or relate to a character, or, you know what I mean, without having knowledge of that, for me at least. I, I don't know. See, I, I don't agree in this situation because it's a light fantasy novel well, and it focuses more on the how the characters react to the situation than it does on the life and history of the character itself. I mean, you know, this is a light fantasy. It's, it's more about the worlds and the situations and the stuff than it is about like, say game of Thrones where every single damn character has like, you know, right. a five <laughs> chapter backstory. Um, well, wait a know. second, wait a second, because the backstory is there. The exposition. When I say there's no exposition, the exp like, like the moderator said, the exposition is the book. Yeah. Because you do learn that Skeev was a thief. You do learn that, you know, you do learn all of those things through the dialogue and through the internal dialogue, which is, you know, I was going to say earlier, the best books do that, in my opinion. They do all of that through watching the character. Well... Look I at, agree. Well, the one thing I do love about it too is that he, because he jumped into it, that it was a very fast-paced book, and it kept you hooked. I mean, it wasn't right. You know, no, well, it was. Yeah. Well, we'll get into that. Yeah. Right. I mean, I look at it that because I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, Harry Harrison does the same thing with the stainless steel rat. I mean, the first book, he's already an established character he doesn't really get into his background until like a dozen books in he finally huh. wrote writes a book that gives his you know gives um uh the grizz's backstory it because it wasn't important to the character right which i can okay. see your point on that i i, I can I, I mean i can see where i mean and you do learn as you go along I and mean, you get more information as you go along with the right interaction between the characters i get but we still haven't really all right so i think we need to go back to the question ignore the exposition thing because that wasn't even supposed to really the discussion wasn't in the exposition the discussion is how did you come to care about the characters because you can't no matter no matter how story reliant it is or should i say situation or environment reliant um you still have to care about the characters to be able to make it through a book like this and this book was like it, and it wasn't just that it was an easy read though it was a fair you know we'll talk about that in a minute but but you got through it real easy the characters just kind of you're like okay i accept that and i mean you accept some really weird stuff 
You do, and the other thing is, is I like all the characters. Even, even I can't remember who the bad guy was. The main, it's the main Bond. guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you like all of them, even in the two imps. I mean, how can you not like oh, them? I, mean, imps are great. <laughs> I forget their names. <laughs> I can't remember the Bro- Brock. Some I can't remember. Brock and I don't Throttle, remember the other guy. Throttle Ward or no, something. Throck, Throckwaddle was who? Was, oh yeah, that's right. No, it's Throckwaddle. Or Throckwaddle, yeah. Yeah, that's who Skeev was. It was imitating for a little while until they switched that around on Quigley. <laughs> and Quigley, right. I'm sorry, but Quigley reminds me of Don Quixote. I don't know why. I don't know who he reminds me of. He 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 reminds me of um oh the old not not stereotypical at all Dudley Do Right. Yeah, but <laughs> he's. I, I think the moderator's right. Quigley's almost like the pre senility Don Quixote. Right. You know, the retired <laughs> soldier that, you know, he's looking for that last little bit of glory, but he, he doesn't really know what he's actually dealing with. Because right. again, he's he's from Claw as well. He's a Claude. He he's not been exposed to this. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the puns are wonderful. The, yes. Yeah. The whole series. <laughs> well, and then the, the third question that you had, moving on, because we the timer just went off, it was just how likely you are to read the next book in the series. But you two have both already continued. I'm the only one, and I am definitely reading the next book. I'm going to read the series. I really did enjoy the book. I can't remember I what the next one is. Uh, I don't have my Kindle handy. Yeah, and I don't feel like googling it, but it, it, it has myth in the title. Well, they all yeah. do. Um, <laughs> one thing to um, if you do read, there is. I thought it was mysteries and imperfections, but no, that's like no. You're thinking of myth nomers and imperfections, or and that's like and five or six. No, that's oh no, it's little myth, myth marker. I think that's like book four is or it? three. Can you read these out of order or no? No. No, you really I, I cannot because even though there's not a lot of char- character development initially, they they do get into character development. I mean, Skeev, his personality through the series does evolve, um, you know, and his relationships with the other characters, you know, does kind of solidify and things like that. And um, you have to really read them in order to kind of understand what's going on. Because okay. I made that mistake. I read book number three before I read book number two. And I there were a lot of references I didn't get because I hadn't read the second book. Oh, okay. I'm trying to find out which one is the next book. I can definitely say I'm going to reread the rest. Hit or miss? Hit or miss. Yes. That's it. Yes. I think I even have it. Yeah, and there are 19, though, aren't there? Is that what – is that uh, – You're going to make me look at this. Really? I I didn't I know there were there that were. I think that's right. Because I think the – something Mythink for a long time was the last one that I read. And then something Mythink kind of wrapped up the big story and then everything that was done after that was just basically a collection of just random adventures you know they were kind of like the monster of the week for you know x-files kind of thing it wasn't the big narrative the big plot was basically wrapped up in something something mythic okay and after that they kind of went off on a bunch of different tangents yeah, because it looks like that's when Jody Lynn and I joined was after something Myth Inc. Right, right, and and the rest of them after that, with the exception of like two or three, were basically a collection of like anthologies and short stories. Hmm. Okay, good to know. Uh, I will tell you. I was wrong. Myth Conceptions is next, and then Myth Directions. Right. Oh yeah, myth conceptions, myth directions, hitter myth, mything persons, 
uh, little myth marker, myth ink link, uh, myth nomers and imperfections, myth ink in action, sweet myth three of life, so on and so on. Sweet myth three life and then something myth ink, I think was one after sweet myth three. Um, myth ink in action is an interesting novel because that was the first one where you got to see stuff from the point of view of a character other than Ski. Hmm. Is Oz in all of them? Does he stay with Oz? I guess I shouldn't ask that. I, uh, <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. That's that's a big plot point towards the um, yeah. end of the series. That's okay. basically that's what Mythnomers and Imperfections is about. Is some something happens between Skeev and Oz? But okay. um, yeah, yeah, but he comes, but he's still there in Myth Direction. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't. The the stuff doesn't happen until the book right before well in myth and numbers and imperfections. And as as Scott Skeev gets older, like in the later stories after something mythic, him and Oz kind of I don't want to say drift apart, but their personalities kind of they don't travel around as much together anymore. Very interesting. Well, I'm definitely going to continue on. It was it was definitely fun, but and it's light. It, it like I, you picked a good book, especially after Celesti Prophecy. Oh, that yeah. was a great book to follow up with because it is light. It is very, yeah, yeah. It's it's a light fantasy, and it's one of those that like, um, you know, dude was saying earlier, um, you know, you. You read it when you're young because I I mean they're the books are geared basically for young adults but you you read it like when you're like a teenager and then you read it as an adult and it it's still just as fun as it was when when you were younger. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I don't think there's really an age limit on these. No, and one of the beautiful things about fantasy is they're they're forever locked in their own time, so they're timeless. Right. Pretty much. But uh, you can't. You can't even. I mean, even some even sci-fi. Most of the time, slips out of that. You know, you you go back and you read two thousand one: A Space Odyssey and go, ha. <laughs> or you watch the movie, um, fast forwarding through the forty-five minute middle. Well, but. I have never seen it. Look, look at it this way. Um, it's a great slideshow. Blade Runner. It takes place <laughs> yeah. Blade Runner. Three years from now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Twenty nineteen. Damn it! I want my <laughs> Nexus sixes. We do have Nexus sixes, but you know they're not the same. We're not going to discuss Nexus sixes on the Nexus. Yeah. <laughs> Extraordinary readers. Extraordinary readers. Anyway. Um, I, I almost bought one, a Nexus 6, when I got my phone. I wanted to, I wanted to buy a Nexus 6, name it Roy, retire it after four years. <laughs> <laughs> and then right before I retired it, I was going to have it play the monologue. But I was like, no, I'm not spending $350 for a joke. <laughs> I, all right. Well, I guess, I guess we can move into the, the scoring. Yeah, you gonna review it? Yeah, I'm just gonna go over it real quick. Um, it's respect, which is readability, editorial, story, pace, entertainment, characters, and total. Uh, for readability, it's basically you know, um, the difference between reading Peter Toole and Dr. Seuss. Um, Editorial is, you know, if, if there were any serious grammar issues or other editing problems. Uh, story is, you know, things like flat story, missing elements, um, out of sequence uh, stages, that sort of thing. Um, a perfect story, of course, has all of the elements required to fit the five-act structure and so on. And I realize that's somewhat subjective, but oh well. Uh, the, the pace, pace can be one of two things, you know, or both really either it's, it grips 
grips you uh, or it doesn't, and also whether or not it speeds up and slows down and speeds up and slows down. You know, like you're you're getting through a big, you know, action sequence, and all of a sudden it's somebody's going to the John. Um, unless it's relevant to the story, of course. And then, of course, there's just entertainment, which is purely subjective. How much did this book entertain you? Uh, the, the example we have here is um, one is, you know, Henrik Ibsen. Again, if you don't know who that is, look it up. And 10 is Alan Quartermain saving Sherlock Holmes from Sauron. Uh, and then characters. So this is character development as well as how you feel about the characters. So one is they're complete strangers to you. Um, 10 is they lived across the street your whole life. Um, and then T is just total. So we total it all up, take the averages, and that gives us our final score out of 60. So I will turn it over to the moderator to start, I guess. Yeah, I think we're just going to roundtable it like we did last time. And we'll just start off with Chris. What, you, what, what did you give it for readability? Oh, I, I give it a 10. Because it's it, it's one of those books that's easy to pick up. It's easy to read. Um, you can get through it in an afternoon. Um, it never gets boring. It never gets up its own butt. Well, wait, that's probably another topic. But it readability, it's very easy to read without insulting the intelligence of the reader. You know, right. um, you can pick it up, read it in the afternoon, understand it, and, you know, put it down. And it leaves you wanting for more. You you want to go back into that world. So, okay. you know, that's why I think for readability. Dude? I gave it a nine. I gave it a nine because, um, because it wasn't Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Uh, which, which I don't even. I think even Dr. Seuss would get a nine just because he uses words that aren't words. Well, I'm sorry. But, I have to defend Dr. Seuss because even his. I'm sorry, but some of his books actually have political views to them. Well, There's no, more in I depth than Dr. Seuss. Yeah, they would. I'm, not, I'm talking. I'm talking about you know readability as far as how easy it is to get through the sentences, how you know uh, right. understandable right. the language Dialect. is. You know how many. You know, fifty dollar words are in there. Five dollar words are in there. You know, or just plain English, uh, as well as some comprehension. But I, I try not to let comprehension be a part of that because no two people have identical vocabulary. So, right. Uh, but I gave it. A, I did give it a nine. I gave it a nine because it, it wasn't Biggles the cat goes south. If I what? was, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, if I, if, if I was to have one minor complaint, the, the use of puns gets a little excessive after a while. Sometimes um, it feels a little forced. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have too many problems with that. I, I, didn't, I gave it an eight. One, because, like I said, I was a little confused. Well, not confused at the beginning. I just wanted more information. I guess I wanted more information on Skeev and his teacher, but that's just me. Um, which kind of threw, I don't know. It, I guess as far as readability goes, that doesn't really affect readability. But um, when they went to, what what planet was it that Deep they went left. to with the bazaar yeah. where they got Gleep? Yeah. When they were there, there was a little bit of dialect. Not hard. <clears throat> wasn't hard. Wasn't difficult to get through. But um, other than that... You know, it was an easy read, and I agree with that guy. I mean, it was, it's, it is a great book just to pick up and get away for a minute. It is. It's, it, it, it's perfect for that. So, editorial. That's uh, editorial is. Um, if there's any glaring punctuation or grammar issues, um, what'd you rate it, that guy? For for what? Editorial. 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 <laughs> Yeah, grammar um, and punctuation. Well, that I type rated thing. it a ten, but like I said, the personal bias. Um, yeah, I, there really weren't a lot of like punctuation, or I, I, I mean, I didn't notice any major ones. Um, there might have been a couple of typos in there, and I think there were in some of the later books. But you're going to find that in almost every book. Um, like I said, the well, that's readability, the 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 use of puns, but editorial wise, I mean, it's. You know, I've, I've read books where just the structure was appalling, and it's not like that. It's There's no glaring 
grammar sentence errors and like if grammar is used in incorrectly it's because of how the character itself talks like there are some characters well, it's, that, right, well that's dialect it's yeah. that's different like yeah. chumley for example you right. know in, in his big crunch persona you know no it's, it's other, used appropriately in dialect yes exactly it's used appropriately but i gave it i gave it uh i actually gave it a seven why um and the reason that I gave it a seven is because I actually did come across quite a few uh, misplaced punctuations and oh, really? spelling errors. Yeah, huh. I did. Um, but that's see, I gave it a nine, and I don't think I I probably wouldn't have noticed just because I probably would have put it in with dialect or whatever was. I don't know. I think you get so into the book that you wouldn't. I didn't notice any. That's well, kind of I why say, I gave it a nine. There's probably having, some there, but I just didn't see them because I was into the book. <laughs> I was being very strict about it as just a technical score because I don't think it took away from anything at all, uh, which we'll lead into with other with the other scores. But but I did have to say, you know, hey, wh why is why does that word have three S's in it? <laughs> altogether yeah not in dialect that kind of thing but and i wouldn't i won't cite examples because it doesn't take away from the story and if there were so much of it that i would have rated it i'll tell you what i will bring a list if i ever rate anything five or below in this category yeah because that that'll be yeah Anyway, that that means that Microsoft Word could have corrected the errors that are there, right? And I will. Well, and I'm the other thing is the other thing is I give him due respect because this was done long before digital. This was yeah. done in 1969, so there were this had to go through several Holy different shit. people. Was it that old? Is it really that old? I thought I it was done. Wait, wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Nope, You're nope, thinking nope. Of... I'm thinking of the Terminal Man. Never mind. No, no Terminal not, Man. Uh, yeah, that's sixty nine. Ah. Um, no, another fine myth. I think is like seventy seven or something. Yeah, seventy eight. Okay, well, none, nonetheless, it was long before. Yeah, it was late seventies. Right, he was he was yeah. on a typewriter probably. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, they they did have word. They like, had rud rudimentary word processors, but word processors back then, but. Editorial is hard for me because if I'm really into the book, I don't think I would notice. Glaring punctuation. Grammar would probably stick out to me, but punctuation right. I don't think would. The bunny rabbits is coming. <laughs> would stand out. To me. <laughs> Two thes. I'd, 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 in a book like this, in a book like Celestine Prophecy, I would think about it for the next three pages while I wasn't being entertained and was trying to do anything but think about what I was reading. Right. But in this, in this book, I would completely gloss over a double the. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. I will be back in a moment. Okay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that guy. <laughs> we should well, have music like for when this happens. Right. Do, 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 do. Well, no, we need hey. That. Hey. <laughs> no more than four notes or we'll get sued. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, you don't want me thing. to sing. That would be bad. Oh, that's not what I meant. Hmm. Well, I don't know that there's much more to say about editorial. You really found that many mistakes, though? I did. I did. Yep. Huh. There were quite a few. Quite a few editorial mistakes. And I, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm sure my revisions took four or five passes to... And, and there's probably still a bunch scattered in, in my own writing. But. See, that's one reason why I don't think I'll ever give a 10 in that. I, I don't, because. No. I, I don't, I don't know I that will, it could ever be perfect. Book. I mean, you're just going to have mistakes, even ones that have gone through. That's not necessarily true. There is one book that I can guarantee is a 10. And what? that's Elements of Style by William Strunk Jr. Oh, I thought you were going to say the dictionary. <laughs> Uh, depends on which one and 
what year, <laughs> but I know this is true. Okay, Webster's Day, Merriam Webster's Dictionary. Modern day, there, yeah, they have ain't in there. No, I'm kidding. They do, but they also say that it's non standard. So far be it for me to, I love the people at Merriam Webster. <laughs> anyway. All right. He's back. So we'll move on. Story yes. structure. That guy, what'd you give for story structure? 10. See, I. <clears throat> Again, I don't know where it would fit, if it would fit like with narrative or what, but I mean, I, I think the novels are structured very well. Um, you know, well, because, the first one, make sure we're, we're, we're only talking well, about the first okay. one. Okay, well, I'm talking about the first one. It, I, I think it's the way it's structured is very well because you're basically only following one character. So the the way it's structured is from his point of view so you don't get into the confusion like if i don't know if you've ever read any of the george r r martin stuff well but, and again like, structure is not perspective well what would what what do you consider it's your structure? five points it's the um the exposition the, five, the, the rising six. action the um climax falling action and the Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's structured. I mean, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it <laughs> float. <laughs> it flows smoothly throughout the story. It's not like jumping all over the place, you know, where you're looking at one character, then you're looking at another character, then you're looking at another character. You know, it stays within a pretty linear it's, flow. It is. It is first person limited. Okay, so. Okay, that's natural in a first person limited. I gave it a nine, which is probably one of the higher ones that I'll give because I think that it went through three acts very well. Um, but all truth be told, there was a lot of rising action. There was a, a great climax, and then there was maybe a step off a, a porch of falling action and then very little, very little uh, closure, very little denouement or dynamo, whatever you want. You know. um, but I still gave it a nine because I still understood everything and it was entertaining, which this was really terrible, but how did it end? Over, but oh, I know how it ended. Oh, I didn't think it was bad. I didn't think the ending just abruptly ended. Well, it wasn't that it was an abrupt ending. It was just that there wasn't a lot of – there wasn't as much setup as I expected there to be for another book, I guess. Well, yeah, they – I thought – I beg to differ with you. I think he did a great job because he basically goes on to tell them where everybody – I mean, they're all off on – Well, yeah, they do. They do. And it sets them up for like, them staying it, together and they're, you know – there's it obviously going to be like future adventures. Trunk. Huh? It still felt like a short trunk on an Oldsmobile. Hmm. I wasn't, it wasn't bad. I, get, I mean, I gave it a nine. Come on. Right. No, you gave it I, – I honestly, you gave it a higher than I did. I gave it an eight. And it's only because I did have a hard time with the exposition. I didn't feel like it was a strong exposition. In his defense, this I haven't read the rest of the series, so the whole book could have been an exposition. Mm -hmm. You know? I, so – but on, I, I do have to give him props. I loved the chapter headings. That was yeah. very unique and very – I did. That really added to the structure of the story, I felt, because every chapter heading kind of gave you a little bit of a clue or a sarcastic remark as to what was, was going to happen in the chapter. Right. It was a cheap and easy but very, very, very fun smoking gun for the mood of the entire chapter. Yes. Exactly. Very well put. <laughs> Why? Thank you. <laughs> no, I do. I and 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 he used a vast array of people. I mean, you had Darth Vader in there and Thomas Edison, and I mean, I think they even had to equip from the Art of War at one point. <laughs> I'm not sure, but that yeah, I just he, that was really original. It. it was it was good. I, I yeah. liked that. 
And he continues that, I think, through the series, if I'm not mistaken. I think so, yeah. Now, see, I thought the rising action was a little slow to me. I don't... I mean, there was a dip. It felt it, like there was a dip in it. Well, I mean, it continued on, and it, I mean, I don't know. I, I did enjoy, well, and I'll talk more about that in entertainment, but the, as far as story structure goes, I, I gave it an eight. I, you know, like I said, I had a hard time with the exposition. I don't agree with you with the ending. Sorry. I disagree. I thought the That's ending right. was pretty good, and, and it made me want to read the next one. So I didn't say it was bad. For the record, <laughs> for the record, before you go... I no, didn't say but you it was said that bad. there was no denouement, and I think there was, but, you know. I didn't think it's it was an abrupt denouement. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm not French. <laughs> well, as far as that goes, moving on to pace, which pace is kind of the jumping from sequences, isn't that what we decided not? Mm -hmm. You and I were looking at just two different things, I think, at one point. Well, because because pace in a book, when when you're learning to write... They describe it as I mean it's it's pace. You, you you when you're watching a football game, you don't on the television when it's edited, you don't see the boring parts. You only see the exciting parts. You know you spend a little time on the boring parts and a lot of time on the you know you have to have your instant replays. You know what I mean. You have to have your slow motion, and that's that's the way that I look at it is. You know, if if you've got characters that are how I spent my summer vacation. Anyway, Robert Jordan. <laughs> uh, no. Yes, no. I have to agree. I love Robert Jordan, but he goes on sometimes. Yeah, I, it, I, he I get tired of the cornfields. I mean, it's but like not really like nearly as bad now. as Tolstoy. No, no, but I mean. <laughs> Yeah, Jordan. And in case you wanted to know what edict was being signed, here's the. <laughs> right. Yeah, but Martin's another one that's kind of like that. Although I haven't read, I only read the first book. But Martin's another one that you know he could probably cut those books in about half. <laughs> there, there's a lot of stuff in in those books that it's well. Just, there's a lot of really? authors that are like that. If, if if Arthur C. Clarke could do that, then all of his um, all of his work. With a space odyssey, you know, two thousand one, three thousand one, and so on. Yeah, could have been one book. It it could have been an article in the Times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, back to the pace of this book. Would would you rate it, that guy? Now I'll have to add uh, that as part of the review. We also reviewed. No. Uh, again, um, I gave it a ten because I'm biased, but. Um, no, the book's paced very well, and again, like we said about, you know, it's it's first person limited. You know, you're not, you're just going by the point of view of Skeeve, but the pacing of the book is done very well. Like, you know, he's explaining what's happening to him, and it's not, you know, like an entire chapter just, well, I just kind of sat there and stared at the walls. You know, there there's none of that. I mean, it's you know, him describing every new experience that happened to him. So it's, it, it has a pretty steady pace. It, it doesn't, it, it slows down when it's narrative appropriate, but it never slows down to the point where it bores the reader. Right. And, you know, the, the, the novel itself is only what, like 130 pages or something like that. It's not very big. Somewhere in there. Yeah. It's not, it's not, long. it's not, you know, so, <laughs> So if you have a book that small and you want to kind of keep the readers entertained, you have to kind of maintain a pacing or else they'll be like that, you know, it was crap. So it's paced very well because it has to be because of the size of the book. Yeah. What about you, dude? As a, as a writer, the size of the book is dictated by the pace and how quickly you get something done. When you're done telling a story, you're done telling a story. But on that same note, I don't care. And they didn't care in the age of legends, and they shouldn't care now. There was this weird like syndication era where everybody cared about that. And, and it, there's still some of that bleed over now. But, you know, uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was 36,000 words. It was not long at all. 
at all in an era where we're reading 100 to 200 K easy in fantasy sci-fi, even for young adult. Um, which is why I was, I was a little rough, but not on the pace because for me, there was a major slowdown when right about the time when Quigley happens, it, there was a point where even that interaction, even that the, the cunning repartee, you know, the, basically the negotiation and, and complete bullshitting that Oz is doing I loved that part. I loved it until it was until they were done, and then it was all right. So now he's with us. What are we going to do? And it got. I don't know. Part of that, for some reason, felt cheap, um, or at least well, I shouldn't say cheap. It wasn't cheap. It it felt slow. Um, uh, it didn't fall in line with. And maybe it's because that's the point where they really slow their their travel. I, I'm not sure. Something about that, though, or, or or right after that, made me feel like it slowed down a little bit. So I gave it an I think, I think right after that, they headed into – they started going after the other – the demon, whatever. It starts with an F. No, the Deville. They went, yeah, the Frumple. Deville, yeah. That's where they go look for the Frumple, which I think that maybe it is right after – I liked the like the sword exchange and all that, but there was some something between that and then him departing and them going to find Frumple that was slowed it down. Slowed it down, yeah. So I gave it, but I still gave it an eight. I gave it an eight because it was still very well paced as far as I was concerned. You know, that was one of the things that made it so easy to read was it was just like boom, 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 boom. But it wasn't over. You know, it wasn't Dan. You know, well, I'm not going to go into that. A different genre, different different level of writing, even level of comprehension but it wasn't over done at all so it was just a nice smooth right i gave it a nine i didn't i i, I enjoyed it i thought the pacing was good i i agree with that guy because it being from the for, first person perspective you're always with that character right. and experiencing what he's experiencing and i think that kept the pace going especially because he was experiencing so many new things right. um I didn't – the only thing that I kind of had and the reason why I took off was I think just because as an adult – if I would have read this as a kid, I think it would have been a totally different experience than reading it as an adult. I still completely enjoyed it, but I think I would have been a little more hooked as a, as a child because I wouldn't have been able to predict as much, I guess. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Not that it's a real predictable book, but – I think no, but just I think reading that, an experience and you kind of, I, I don't know. I think I would have enjoyed it and I think it would have been more fast paced for me at a younger liked, age. I think the huh? fans of the book liked that predictability. Um, I think the fans of the book liked that predictability. Oh, well. That it was, you know, this is going to happen, but it was like, a, it was almost like a, yeah, you know, it's about to happen. Like kind of thing. Like this is, you know, he's going to talk his way through a brick wall to get out of this, but it's going to be fun. And it, you know, that's yeah. kind of what it was for me. It was like, yeah, I saw that coming, but I mean, and each character is so perfectly cliche in their, in their overall personality, you know, I mean, but especially, especially uh, Tonda, she's just, you knew exactly what she was and you know and but they're not i they, mean they, well no on because, the surface, because the weird part is here's the thing wait a minute i i have to i have to say this oz is han solo okay wait a minute don't get onto characters yet we're not there yet or do you want to skip characters and then go to entertainment? I'm fine with that. Go ahead. We'll no, move on no, to characters. No, no, because it's not – because I didn't want to discuss the characters under characters. This is the, the, We're supposed to be in the scoring, really. I just wanted to stop and say that because Oz is Han Solo with General Akbar and uh, the dude from Babylon 5 mixed together. Walter? No, no, no. The lizard. Huh? The lizard. Oh, Babylon Five. Um, yeah. Jakar. Jakar. Thank you. Yeah, he's he's basically so a flat-headed Dovalari than he is Jakar. 
he's more con artist. No, than I'm he talking is about. I'm talking about. Man. I'm talking about physically, man. Oh, <laughs> look, at the, look at the pictures of him. His 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 head is flat with a mouth that wraps around the front of it, and his eyes are on the sides. Yeah, he's a lizard. Yeah, but he's not even a lizard in the way that you'd think of a lizard. He's a lizard if that lizard was somehow related to General Akbar. Right. And, but Jakar is a marsupial, but we're not going to get into that. Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This is one bad thing about reading it on the Kindle. I didn't really see... It had the pictures, but you couldn't see it. Very, and you can't zoom in. Well, you can zoom in, but it's a pain in the butt. I, um. Yeah. So I well I couldn't really see it because I know I think you asked me if I looked at the pictures and I, I really yeah. couldn't see them. Not that that necessarily matters, but the description does fit. Um, yeah. When he does describe him, when he comes out of the the fog over the pentagram. Yeah. <laughs> the actual the only book that was actually illustrated though was um, Sweet Mystery of Life. There was a special edition that was released that was an illustrated edition. Um, huh. Well, they all have the little, they all have the little pictures. Well, the cover pictures, but no, they all have no, they all have little thumbnail, like not even they're bigger, like vignette size pictures in uh, at each chapter. Oh, at the beginning of the chapter, the like the, okay, right, I, right yeah, above yeah, yeah. the where they give you the. Oh, mine didn't have that. Oh, okay. I only oh. had like one or two pictures throughout, and it was in the middle of the chapters. Oh, mine has oh, them on no, all. No, the, no, the, the, huh. All the chapter headings. Yeah, anyway. my chapter headings just had the chapter heading, the quote. Anyway. Okay, so. Well, I got to pause for a second. Okay. You guys can go on. You can move on to um, entertainment if you want. Right. I'll be right back. What about character? Okay. Uh, we're, we, characters after entertainment. Oh, okay. I mean, we, I, I guess I can we guess. Can wait on her. We can wait on her. Well, not really. Okay. Well, I can start then entertainment. Um, again, give it a 10. <laughs> um, very entertaining book. Um, it was, I, I liked it because um, it was humorous without being overly so. And like we said earlier, yeah, the pun seemed a little forced. But it wasn't to the point where you're like, oh, God, you know, not another pun, you know, because if you've ever read um, the Xanth novels by Piers Anthony, um, I, I mean, it, it gets so excessive that you're just like, we got to stop this, you know, I mean, and it, it aspirin isn't like that. I think that there were a few things that fell a little short. Weak, weak, dead, weak, dead sister fell a little short for me. That wasn't a pun, though. But the what? I'm not going to go through the whole thing just because. But the moderator knows what I'm talking about, and if you've in. No, I missed half that. I, all I got was. What, what? I said. I said that the, the we were talking about the puns not falling. She well, guy was talking about the puns not falling flat, and I said. There was a couple. There were a couple things, a couple puns, and a couple jokes for me that fell a little flat. The weak dead sister was excessive. It's just, it, and it wasn't even like. Oh it's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Not it's necessarily pun. the offensiveness, okay. just the like. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That was dumb. It was. Just, it was a stupid. Yeah, but it was a throwaway joke, and I mean, it was like one joke. I mean, it wasn't like an. an no, entire... I'm not. I'm not. Ta I didn't take major. I gave it uh, as far as entertainment. I gave it a nine, because it's not quite. Alan Quartermain saving Sherlock Holmes from Sauron. Yeah. Um, or, like I said, Xanth. <laughs> but it's, well, I wouldn't give Xanth a 10. I'm saying it's not a 10 for me, but it is a 9. Yeah. Well, I'm the horrible person. I gave it an 8. <laughs> well, hey, you know, keep in mind, all these numbers, we're, we're doing well. Yeah, he's still pretty. He on my score, he he still did very well. I gave an eight because I think what you were referring to, there were a few lewd comments that I was like, eh, that wasn't necessary, but you know, whatever. Um, and then I, it, it, a little bit predictable, I guess, for me. I can see your point, what you were saying earlier, where people, I mean, it is predictable, but you you're okay with it. 
I did love the talking in circles. I absolutely loved the talking in circles. I, that was that was fun for me. But well, that's Oz's shtick, you know. Yeah. So okay, here's a question: Are all the perfects like that, or is it just him? Nope. Are they like, perfect are. known for that? Yeah. They okay. all are. Everybody is the stereo. That's one thing. Well. Yeah, it seems everybody, like all everybody of the is the stereotype, stereotype that they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, they don't see not a lot's known about the Pervex, and they don't really get into them. Um, there's another Pervex character that's mentioned in like one of the later novels, and then Skeeve actually goes to Oz's dimension in Mythnomers and Imperfections. Um, and then there's like one of the short stories um, is about some pervex that are running a scam on Diva. Um, and, but they're all like that, you know, excessively strong. You know, they're pretty much mostly all con artists. Um, you know, very, very good with magic. Um, yeah, they are one of the most feared dimensions because so of like that. Like I said, they're, every character in the book is a walking representation of the stereotype that covers their race or or creed. Right. Okay, so what was Tanda? She's a trollop. Which She's is, from Trollia. She's a trollop. She <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and and her brother Chumley is a troll, also from Trollia. That's funny. <laughs> okay, so I guess that brings us to characters. Yeah, I didn't hear. But what, what did that guy rate it? Ten? Ten, yeah. Ten. <laughs> I missed that part. Sorry, teenagers. Um, all right, moving on to characters. Okay. I gave it a ten. I, I love pretty Gee, much. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I love pretty much every single character because... <sighs> And again, based on this book, the the characters, they're they're a little one dimensional, but not really. Like, you know, no, they're very one dimensional, but it's okay. Yes, yes, but they do again. They develop over the series. But going back to this book, but even that, they're you know, like when he first meets Chumley. Does he meet Chumley in this book? No, no. Oh, damn it. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead. It, it's been a while. Okay, never mind. But he meets Tonda. So yes, he, meets, he does. He meets Tonda. And right. They, they, he meets Tonda, and he gets Gleep. And that's okay. basically it. And they run off his van, and that's basically it. Okay, so he doesn't go to the... No, no, no. no. ...in this one, the no, restaurant no. that Chumley hangs out at. No. Uh, okay, damn Stop it. it. Spoilers. Okay. See, no, 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 just no. an exposition book. All the fun stuff hasn't happened yet. <laughs> yeah, okay, never mind. I, I totally well, forgot and, that. Bear in mind that this is also, I mean, Guy here has made every single one of these subjective, but um, there is a lot of subjectivity to the entertainment and characters, I think. Um, probably most with, well, no, probably equally. Um, I gave it a nine because I love all the, all of the characters. They're all great. They're all great in the way that they are exactly what they are, but they're not the characters from my favorite book. So he got, he got the one point off for, for, for the, for the absolute subjective point for not being specific characters. Um, Otherwise, I agree wholeheartedly. The characters were all great. Uh, Tonda's kind of annoying at times, but not. It's like okay, the stereotype that she is is perfect. But you see more, and again, not in this book. Damn it! I, I see. I've read all the books so many times. Well, and, and that's why kind of this is this is the story for another fine myth. Yeah, they kind of blend together. So, I mean, you see other facets of her personality. I mean, because that whole you know, flirtation, you know, it's just, it's, it's a front, you know? Well, of course it is. She's an assassin. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> but that's the whole thing. And you know that, you know that going in, you know that going in. It's, right. it's the poison stiletto, period. Um, but I didn't, in any other, in any other style or technique, it would be appalling. But if you like, you know, cheesy, tongue-in-cheek, super purple prose, noir detective kind of things, this is great. It's, it's that in a fantasy realm. It's, it's, right. it's, a, it's a 1940s, 1950s New York attitude in a medieval setting with technology and all of these wonderful different ways of doing the same thing, but have it being a talking lizard or, you know, there, there's, there's just one kind of twist to everything. Yeah, well, a little great, great guy is called Devils or Deveals. Yeah, Deveals. Deveals. Yeah, because I, I from don't Diva. know why I keep... <laughs> <laughs> But anyway. So yeah. that, well, I liked his explanation of demons, that they were just... Dimensional. Dimensional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Demon just stood for dimensional something. Dimensional beings them, or something like that. Yeah. I gave him, I gave him a, an eight, I guess. I'm not really sure why I went that low, but I know Tanda wasn't... I wasn't a huge fan of Tanda. And and Frumple was kind of, eh. Who? but mm, overall Frumple. I loved all the I loved all of them, even the imps and the I, I mean he did a great job of making you like everyone. Mm -hmm. Refresh my memory, Frumple was he the devil that was hiding in Claw? Yeah, the yes. where they, the, yes. where they got the D hopper off of him. Right. Okay. All right. That's okay. I wasn't. I couldn't remember who it was, but yeah. okay. Okay. So, totals. That guy, obviously, total of 60. Uh, my total was 51. The I had a 50. Yep, the moderator's total was 50. Uh, so, our total score is 53.67. Nice. Out of so, way, way, way better than the Celestine Fallacy. Um, <laughs> more entertaining, light, and less time consuming than Anna Karenina or the girl who stole my heart and delayed my train. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would definitely thing. recommend this book, especially, and you could re recommend it to anybody, right? yep. any age yeah. group, any, you know, um, it's a fun book. It really is. It is a fun book. And it's definitely w worth it to pick up the sequels as well, because like I said, a lot of the characters that are introduced in this novel are pretty much regulars through the, throughout the entire series, right. like Tonda and Oz and Skeev. And, you know, you do get to see those other facets, facets of their characters um, that they didn't really show in the initial book. So would you agree? Do you think this was more of an, an exposition book? I mean, it's more setting the ground for the rest of the books. Oh, oh definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, that's what I kind of got the, that's why I definitely want to go on and read more. Which it's okay. It's you know what it is? It is it is the book form of the absolute perfect T V pilot. Yeah. It is the perfect series beginner. This I is God they, I am going to do a series and here's the foundation for it. And I hope to God they never do, because look what they did to Shannara. <laughs> Well, no, no, I'm I not talking about. It. I'm not talking about making it into a TV series. I won't even watch Shannara. We'll get that. That's that's a topic for a whole other day. Maybe even yeah. a different show. Um, but the, uh, but yeah, it is it is a perfect beginner for a longer story. Um, with that, I guess I'll get into. Should I get into the next week's stuff, moderator? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Next week's pick is on Guy, um, and he picked Terminal Man by I'm Michael Clayton, which that was one. written in 1969 yes. yeah, and takes place in 1971. Because if you're going to reach for the future, reach for a realistic one so it's historically accurate later. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was uh, honestly, Guy, I was excited to read this just for comparison's sake to see yeah. what, you know, what he wrote about then and what's actually now. 
It was Which fun. we're not going to talk I, about I, it. Don't talk I about know. it. No, I'm just saying I'm excited about next week. because I, I haven't read it. Next week week is I have the awesome. book, but I got to read it again. But fortunately, I picked it because it's short and I can read it in an afternoon. Well, read it. Read it again because, yes, next next week's episode is going to be fantastic. Then, then because the moderator is awesome and smart and yeah, right. that's why she's the moderator. Um the week following, of course, will be Christmas weekend. We will be doing a show. Um, not sure who all will be, but we will be doing a show. I probably won't be here. And uh, it will be on, what is that called? Is that the author's, the author's story? I can't remember what the title is. Are you talking about the short story book that I was? Yes. Uh, the Chronicles of Harry, Harris Burdick. Oh, that's right. I don't know what the heck I was thinking of. The Chronicles of Her- Her- whatever she said. Harris Burdick. And I'll put a clip on there. It's actually a really intriguing. It's a mystery in, unto itself. And, right. Uh, yeah, we'll put we'll put a little backstory yeah. uh, on the site, on the blog. Don't forget that even though we are not able to respond on the archives, you can comment, you can participate. The questionnaires are always on the blog. Uh, the website, if you're not already there watching this, is extraordinaryreaders.com. You can email us or message us on Google through um, League of no the just League of Extraordinary Readers at gmail.com. Uh, check us out on Facebook uh, and submissions. Twitter. If you want to submit a book yes, for us to review, you're a writer please. and you want to submit a book, you can submit a book. As a matter of fact. Real quick, I will go over the submission guidelines. Uh, now, mind you, we, we do one book a week. So, and we do have quite a few submissions uh, coming in. If you want to get in the queue, get in early. Um, if you've written a book and would like the league to review it, please feel free to submit a copy. We won't guarantee that we, re- we will review the book, but we'll notify you if we decide to include your book on our show. Once we've read your book and determined our rating, we will contact you about your review, at which point you can decline or accept. So, you know... Uh, reason for that is uh, we are at times brutally honest about things. Obviously, if you've watched the last episode, you'll know exactly <laughs> how brutally honest we can be. As a matter of fact, we can be so brutally honest that we might be doing a, a supplemental video to complete one's thoughts on that. Um, don't I don't think it's you. worth it, but anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, and you could absolutely be right about that. It may not be worth the time. Just Suffice it to say, Celestine Prophecy is crap. Um, what we don't like, we don't really care to read romance or erotica. Um, self-help books, there's no real point in reviewing those. If you can't help yourself, book probably won't help. Um, <laughs> religious books, I don't, I don't want to read the Bible in a week. I don't want to read the Bhagavad Gita or the Book of Mormon. Um, what about books that uh, like... Oh, no, 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 no alternate. Celestine Prophecy probably kind of pushes that a little bit even. Um, what was no, he suggesting? No, no L. Ron Hubbard. No, 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 not, not that. But like, you know, like somebody writing a point of view about like a certain religion that's not of that religion, but. No, no, not. If, if it's a story, okay, like. If it were a story that had a religious setting without talking about the religion itself or without pushing the religion a bias, yeah. Yeah, yeah. without well, pushing the religion. I think we're a good example that we're just looking for stories here. Dune. Um, well, but that's not that's different. You can you can get your philosophical meaning out of whatever the hell you want. All right. The the ingredients list on a toaster strudel could be somebody's golden chalice. But right. Anyway, you've given away my secret. Right, but <laughs> but something like Dune would be okay because Dune is fine. Yes, as long as it yeah. is not, you know, Dune is not a biblical. You know, <laughs> people are not worshiping Dune. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, but the whole book is basically <laughs> know, focused on right. on you know the religion around the Muad'Dib and the right. Shiloh, it is by know. will alone that I set my mind in motion. It is by the yeah, exactly, exactly, that the will exactly, acquire yeah. stains. The stains become a warning. It is by will alone that I set my mind in motion. <laughs> um, anyway, not that I love everything Dune. Um, but, okay, we also don't want gruesome or gory books because there's no point. <sighs> no, no poetry. 
we don't want poetry. Shel Silverstein, maybe, but since he's <clears throat> see, but the thing is, uh, going to Gurusam regard, you know, there are some authors. No, no, no Clive it's, Barker it's, it has nothing to do with. Oh, I can't do Clive Barker. I can't. I, I can't. If you guys choose to do something like that, that's fine. But I will exclude myself. No, I no, cannot no, no, do. That's Clive fine. Barker. I was just asking because I I'm a huge fan. If of If you want to do an article, if you want to do an article review for something like that for the blog, which is something that I was going to talk about in a minute, if you want to do an okay. article review or something like that for the blog, and that is not an extension to to participants as much as it is to panel members. Although you write something and email it to me, and it's good enough, I'll put it on the blog. I don't care. I'm I'm shameless. Um, the no, I think that's an awesome idea. But, oh, which is another thing that I have to get, well, okay, slow down for a second, slowing down, nothing gruesome, nothing gory, the reason is just because of the show itself, uh, obviously, for those of you out there watching, we tend to slip, sometimes we cuss, that sort of thing, but we do try to keep it to a dull roar when it comes to things that are iffy, um, poetry is definitely one of those things that's iffy, I don't want to hear that crap, um, unless it's also the thing. I'm going to get hate mail for that, but anyway. Uh, all submissions must be in electronic format so that we can share them amongst the panel members. We will not share them with anybody else. We will not, you know, we will do it. We'll take every possible measure to make sure that your work is not pirated through us. Uh, so PDF or Mobis, we like those because they load well on our Kindles and we can read them in various places. What about uh, nonfiction? We would yes. have to discuss it as a group. Well, you I think it's okay it. because I even submit. mentioned night. I think nonfiction is fine. Right. Submit it. Okay. If it's if you have a question, go ahead and submit it because we're going to review. It's not like we're just going to automatically pompoco it. But and if you don't get that, look it up too. Just not a render children. <laughs> um, maximum word count. Page count is very mm, iffy, but maximum word count is definitely one hundred and twenty thousand ish we may make rare exceptions uh if you're submitting as an author you'll i know you'll know your word count um you can submit to us by messaging us on facebook or just going ahead and sending a submission to the league at extraordinary readers.com and we will respond as soon as we get it and then we'll let you know when we're going to read it and when we're going to review it when it will air and because these are non-mainstream books we will also write small blurbs on the site for your quotables and that sort of thing. Uh, okay, which brings me to the site and the excitement. Nothing. Okay. Um, you cut off. I didn't. I hear said you. the the excitement site oh. onto the site. Never mind. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah it wasn't funny. Um, <laughs> there are going to be reviews and various little tidbits of information for writers, readers alike. There's going to be a new section where uh which I, I i went back and forth with this because i do not like to put things out there until they're finished or whatever but there are a lot of people that don't um and there are a lot of people that even through just um their marketing would like their first chapters reviewed so i will personally review first chapters of anybody who wants to just submit a first chapter um and i will even send you tidbits back and uh and post your little review on the on the on the site so look forward to that kind of thing and i think unless i'm missing anything moderator i think that's it isn't it yeah did you have any other questions guy no about submission or about what we might read right oh and don't forget guy you have to write your three questions before next week we try to have those on the blog by Friday. Oh, okay. So basically, I just have to read the book by Friday and put the questions yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah. Terminal Man, correct. Yeah, for Terminal Man. Okay. Shouldn't be a problem. And then uh, you can either you can either email those to me or whatever. Get them to me Probably somehow. Well, I'll put them up on the site. Um, I think that's it. Now you know. And again, our shows vary in length. Sometimes they're an hour. Sometimes they're two. Sometimes they're an hour and 14 minutes. So <laughs> with that, until next week, I am the Blurry Dude. I'm the moderator. I'm that guy. Peace. <laughs>